Hi everybody, this is Christian from Teamwork Cast, and welcome to a beautiful another episode of how to record your own podcast, uh, where we are going to look a little bit about at how we from Teamwork Cast create our podcasts, at, um, you know the different steps that are involved, and hopefully we will we'll give you some tips on how to record your own podcasts if you want to. Uh, so today we are going to look at how to edit audio how to clean up audio once it has been recorded so let's say you know you recorded your audio uh and what you what we i often see like people what people do is basically just take the raw files from the recordings and just slap them in the background of a video or somewhere and they're done and what, what there's there's two problems that often occur uh, one of them being is that sometimes the audio is not loud enough or maybe sometimes it's too loud actually so the, the, the audio levels are often just, you know, just kind of like off. Um, and the other thing that often happens is that um, there's some background noise. So today we are going to look at those two problems individually. Now, let's just start maybe off with the audio level thing, because that's kind of like a um, like kind of difficult thing to wrap your head around. So... Um, I'm using a program called Audacity here, and it's actually for free. And so that's what I would recommend you to use. There are different programs you can use. They all will work, often work very similarly. Um, so I'm going to open a test file to that demonstrates a certain problem you have, you will have uh, when recording uh, a podcast. So this is a short sample of just eight seconds of, of, of audio. And as you can see, the program represents this by this uh, waveform, uh, this blue ziggy, you know, squiggly line here. That's basically the sound. If you zoom in close enough, you can actually see the individual sound waves. It's amazing. That's, the technology is just blowing my mind. Um, the height of those sound waves um, shows you how loud something is. And, um, you know, there are individual waves and how close the waves are together kind of shows you the, um, how high or low a sound is. Uh, but it's kind of like difficult to see when you zoom out. So you basically you're just seeing, you know, how, how, what, what are the loud, loud parts of your video and what are the not so loud parts of the video. So basically what you always do want to have when you are, when you're finished with processing of your audio is you want to have an audio that is basically maxing, always trying to max out um, the height, the available height uh, in this graph. So you want to see something like this, where you have an audio that goes, you know, where, where the maximum peak is kind of like reaching all the way to the top of this graph. Uh, then that's where you have like really full, you know, you're using the full dynamic range of the recording. Uh, it's it's really loud, and if some somebody wants to have it a little bit softer, they can always turn down the volume because you can't always turn down the volume, you know, from one hundred percent to five percent or something. They could never turn up the volume beyond one hundred percent. That's just not possible, right? So yeah, so you're always trying to to max out um, your voice. But the problem that you are uh, coming into at some point is that. You know, sometimes you're just loud and sometimes you're not just so loud. So let, let me just play you back uh, with this beautiful passage of a recent recording from episode 104. Wait, wait, I, 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 I never created an... Okay, well, what, it's so complicated, guys. It's so complicated. So as you can see that there was like a very loud part and it was a very, very soft part. And so when you put this like... And slap it underneath your video. Like this part will be very audible, the, f the first part, but the second part, uh, it won't be audible at all because I was just, you know, kind of like doing my thing. So, um, yeah, so you might be thinking, oh, let's just, just amplify this. Let's just, uh, I don't know, like 20 amplitude, bam, slam it in, bam. And now if you play like the second part, it sounds like really loud. So complicated, guys, it's so complicated. So you think you might be done, but the problem is that, that the first part that was really loud in the first place is now super loud. You can see that it just clips out. It just reaches outside of the graph. And that's what we call clipping. And if you, if you want to hear what it sounds like, better, if you're using like microphones, uh, earphones right now, just be careful. I'm going to start play now. Wait, wait, I, I, I never created an, okay. Well, what, 
So yeah, so uh, it, that sounds kind of like really, really horrible. So that's what you want to actually avoid. You want to avoid clipping, but you want to still have like the softer parts being louder. So you want to just amplify the softer parts, but you don't want to amplify the parts that are already loud. Luckily, we have a function for this and it's called compressor or compressor. Um, and it's like a very complicated interface here. But uh, basically, you know, this is the important slider. This is how much you want to compress something. Uh, and it, and also, like, the, these two should be also checked in. I'm not going to explain exactly why, but basically what it does is exactly what we've been, talk we've been talking about. The soft part will get amplified and the loud part stays pretty much the same because it's already loud enough. Is it doing anything? I hope it... Jesus, I just, I just clicked on the wrong button, did I? There we go. So as you can see uh, now when I play this. Wait, wait, I, 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 I never created an... Oh, okay, well, well, it's so complicated, guys. It's so complicated. So see, now that's exactly what we want to do. So you want to have a compression pass on most of your audio always. And in fact, most of recording software, like something like Skype or something, always uses pretty, pretty heavy compression uh, on your recording anyway. Um, so yeah, so let us just, I'm going to show you how it looks when we actually have the entire recording. So this is, this was a test, but this is like, this is like an Excella. It's like the entire uh, podcast recording of Nexella. It is one hour and 15 minutes long. And if you zoom out, we will see that, you know, sometimes Nexella is talking and there's lots of long bits of silence in between. And of course, you've already died twice. One more death and it's game over. And of course, as everybody does, sometimes Nexella is really loud. Like, for example, here. What? <laughs> Uh, and sometimes he he isn't like uh, here. Yeah, and when he's mad, it steams. So we want to have uh, compression on this. Let's do that. Compressor one hundred percent. Now this will take some time, so I will actually accelerate this. Okay, so now the audio has been uh, compressed once, and so I'm looking through the audio, and I'm looking for spikes. I'm looking for places where maybe the audio wasn't quite uh, affected enough. Maybe there is like an, another compression um, pass necessary. So, for example, like this. Did you take a max potion? Please tell me you ate one. Or like this. <sighs> I think Cthulhu was hitting the ice nectar. So these are like parts where the audio is not quite maxed out, where it's not going up. So just to be sure, I often use a second compression pass, not quite as aggressive as the first one. The first one was 10 to 1. I will probably go with 5 to 1 um, one more time. And that's it. And as you can see, the parts that we have seen previously, which weren't quite as maxed out, are pretty nicely maxed out now. Did you take a max potion? Please tell me. So they're nice and loud. So uh, I think we are done here um, as far as the amplification, as far as um, volume levels goes. I think that's just pretty done. But now, as you can see, like another problem cropped up. If you can see, like um, there is like those part passages where Nexella is saying nothing. Uh, where previously there was just a straight line, but now you have like this squiggly, squig squiggly line. And if you listen to the uh, silent passages, you will hear a background noise. So now it sounds like Nexella is uh, sitting uh, like on a on a plane or something, or maybe like I don't know on a tractor. It's really horrible. So this is the second thing I wanted to talk to about today, which is how to get rid of noise, of background noise. A again, something when you amplify uh, audio, just like as we did now, or when we uh, added compression on the, onto the audio, it also amplified all of the background noise that was kind of there in the background, but you couldn't listen, to, you couldn't hear it because it was way, way too uh, too soft. Now that we amplified everything, also the 
um, the, the soft noises, it also amplified the, the noise. And now that you're hearing this background noise. So we will have to get rid of this. If you zoom out, <laughs> interestingly, you will see that uh, periodically the background noise is stronger and, and, and weaker. So this means that there's probably uh, some kind of air conditioning going on uh, that turns on and off uh, periodically. All right, so I, uh, so this is a two stage process now. So first I need to select a part that is kind of the background noise that I want to remove. So I'm going to the part where it's really, really loud, the background noise, I'm selecting it like this. Just checking. And now I go to effect and a noise removal. And again, it's a two step process. So first I want to sample the noise. I already selected this part and now I'm clicking on get nose profile here. So now the, the, the program knows what kind of noise I want to filter out. I want to remove from, uh, from the audio file. And so now I double click on everything. So select everything and use the same filter again. But this time, instead of clicking on this upper button here, I click on this lower button. I basically keep all the settings as standard as the default um, because they usually work very well for me. So I'm clicking on OK. And now um, the system will basically, the software will basically analyze the audio file and pretty much filter out all the frequencies where it previously detected noise on. But you must, you must also consider that it will remove noise on the cost of quality, especially if the noise is really, really um, prominent. And if it's like on, on multiple frequencies and stuff like that, um, the voice that you want to preserve, the signal that you want to preserve, will uh, certainly get like damaged a little bit. It won't sound as um, clean as if you had a clean recording. So that's why I would definitely, definitely recommend to you always try to prevent noise from happening in the first place. Really, really make sure that whenever you're recording this, um, this podcast, that you will have a noise free environment. This is very, very, very important. So make sure there are no fans around the background or air conditioning, or there's, um, if you have, you're playing in front of the TV, uh, turn down the volume of the TV. Um, make sure that all the doors and windows are closed. Um, also, um, if you have like a PC or something in, uh, next to the microphone, make sure it's as far removed as possible. If it's a notebook, you might want to see if you can put like, uh, put it in like energy saving mode or something like this. Um, the, so the notebook doesn't have like a fan running all the time. Um, and of course, very important, you have to wear headphones for all discussions and, and conversation on Skype. And also even like try headphones, which don't bleed too much uh, sound out because there are some headphones where, you know, if you wear them, you can still hear um, the headphones themselves. Um, so to do a couple of experiments with this, try to find headphones, which are, which don't bleed out too much noise. Maybe uh, listen to Skype also on low volume. So you may want to really, really make sure that there is no background noise coming to the microphone because filtering those background noise out again will inevitably, you know, decrease the quality of your recording. So now that we are finished with this, let's see if we can, uh, if we can listen to what Nexella is saying. Glacial Agnactor. It's an ice Agnactor. All right, that sounds good. Let's see what this is. Yeah, he might be a little more aggressive though. Um, I think his, his... That sounds good. Generally, it's, it's cleaned up pretty well. A real team player would have told us which one he was going for. You can see here that uh, it didn't filter all, all of the background noise. There's still some background noise there that is um, um, being played in the background. You can't get rid of all of, all of the noise. If you start being like very aggressive about this, it will you will decrease the quality of uh, Nexela's voice even more. Generally, that's a good result. It will get mixed up with the um, audio of the um, game itself, so you won't be listening. Uh, you won't be hearing all those things. Yes, so that's a good result in general. 
and uh, we can uh, move on. So this is basically the procedure I go through with, uh, we go through with all of the audio. We first um, do a compression pass always, um, and we try to maximize, you know, the voice quality, the voice volume, so that it is, you know, using the whole height of the graph. So everything is basically at the same uh, maximum uh, voice level. Um, and then uh, that usually creates some kind of background noise. So we always do um, um, noise removal on, on the entire file to filter out any kind of background noises. And of course, we make sure that the recording is, uh, you know, in recorded in an environment where there's as little as background noise as possible. So now um, to finish up, we uh, usually do um, we convert this from stereo to mono because just because, you know, the uh, voice recordings don't really require um, two channels going on there. This is not a necessary process, but it kind of saves a lot of um, a little bit of processing power. It still saves a little bit of space, um, and it, I think in some cases it makes the interface a little bit more readable, especially if you have later on in editing, if you have those um, those waveforms in your editing software, it's kind of difficult to read them if there are like two stereo channels going on. Uh, and then of course you have to export this. So um, let me see, 104, a result. So one thing that I wanted to also mention is that you kind of always want to, uh, when, when you're dealing with a file that is like an intermediate step in your editing process, you kind of always want to save it as an uncompressed format. So you're not using MP3 or stuff like that because that actually compressing uh, the file, which reduces the quality of the file. You want to use something that's uncompressed. In this case, we are using WAV files, PCM WAV files, which are uncompressed raw files. You can later on delete them when you're, when you're finished with the editing um, because they are pretty big, but um, you just kind of want to make sure because, you know, sometimes you go back to those files, adjust the voice um, um, a little bit and then save them again. And every time you save them as, in a, as a compressed format, it will always decrease the quality. And of course, um, you also have to keep in mind that it takes a little bit of extra time to compress them and it takes a little bit ex extra time of decompress them later on when you're using them in the editing software. It will um, kind of maybe have an impact on your CPU. So that's pretty much it. Um, this is our procedure of how we clean up uh, um, audio files. There is, there are other ways of doing this. There are other tools of you that you can that you can use. I know, for example, that there is like a filter built into which is called, I think, Leveler. I think Leveler is, is something you can use to also kind of make sure that the voice uh, levels are at the same. Um, but I usually, I personally, I didn't have very good experiences with this. I didn't get the results I wanted. Um, however, this is something that you can experiment with. Also something to get rid of noises, for example, like a noise gate, which is also kind of like a pl uh, plug-in or effect you can use to remove some of the noise. Um, all of those effects have like a little bit different concepts behind them and work better or worse in different kinds of situations. You kind of have to experiment with them a little bit to learn what they are about. Um, this is basically like a very basic procedure for you to get started. Definitely you uh, something you want to expand upon to, you know, try different things there. So if you have your own procedure already uh, that you prepared some own plugins, which you would like to recommend to other people, do uh, post them in the comments uh, and definitely share them with us. So that's basically it for today. Next time we're going to maybe look a little bit of about how to edit this in at a video editing program. We'll see you then. Bye bye.